All right, put your Bibles up. Sword drill time. Here we go. <clears throat> Keep them up full extension. I'm going to talk for a little bit so your arms get really tired. So, does anyone remember what we talked about yesterday? Yeah. The Lord being our shepherd through troubled times. Yeah, yeah. I don't have the thing out, sorry. Huh. Candy time. All right. Go for it. So, the Lord being our shepherd in troubled times. And then the day before, does anyone remember what we talked about on Tuesday? What was that? Psalm 19. Yeah, Psalm 19. We talked about um, abiding in God's word. If you want to go get something, you could. And then Monday, does anyone remember what we talked about? Monday? We talked about Psalm 2. Psalm 2, yeah. Entrusting and abiding in the Lord. Great job. Go for it. All right. Today we're going to be talking about Psalm 46. All right. But don't move your Bibles. Full extension, all the way up, all the way up. And uh, I love this psalm. And it's, I mean, we just sung it. You guys know that? Like a mighty fortress was written from Psalm 46 by Luther. And I, I just want to. I think verse 3 is my favorite. Let, let me read it for you. I know your, your, your arms are tired. It's Thursday. Your body's tired. Keep it up. All the way up. You, yes. All right, here we go. Verse 3. I'm going to read it. Should I read it? I'm going to read it slow. <laughs> All right, I won't do that. And though this world with devils filled should threaten to undo us, we will not fear, for God hath willed his tr truth to triumph through us. The prince of of darkness grim. We tremble not for him. His rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is sure. One little word shall fail him. That's what you just sung. That's what you just sung. That is a truth. That is a reality if you are a Christian. So, Psalm 46, we're going to unpack this. This is a great song to just keep in, <laughs> in your heart and your minds. Starting at verse 1, Psalm 46, go. Okay, go for it. He's already here. He's already here. Go back to your seats. What? Sorry, he's already here. You bookmarked it? Cheater. Cheats! You don't get any candy, know, but you're going to read it. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, and though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains quake at its swelling pride. Selah. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy dwelling places of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She will not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations made an uproar. The kingdoms tottered. He raised his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Selah. Come behold the works of the Lord, who has wrought desolations in the earth. He makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariots with fire. Cease striving and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Salah. Great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Psalm 46. I love this psalm. Uh, you guys know who Shane and Shane are? You guys know Shane and Shane? Of course. You guys are music camp. You guys know who Shane and Shane are. They do this psalm. Psalm 46. The Lord of hosts. You know, I, I, it's on repeat in my house all the time. My wife gets tired of it, but... I think it's really great, and I think it captures the, the reality of the psalm. So, friends, have you ever been in a situation or experienced something that is so frightening that you can't seem to think straight at all? Or that it's the only thing that you can think about all day? Has that ever happened to you? Is that something you're familiar with? I have to tell you, truthfully, uh, I have experienced those things. I have recently just been dealing with some anxiety things in full transparency. 
where I would wake up in the middle of the night, like with night terrors, like shaking. And my, I mean, it's pretty gross. Like my whole shirt is like soaked in sweat. Like I just went swimming soaked. It's horrible. It's like really bad. My wife's like, what is going on right now? Did she just take a shower in your shirt? I'm like, no, I didn't take a shower. This is just pure sweat. She's like, that's nasty. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I know. I have to change, it's a whole thing. But seriously, that is what I've been experiencing. And maybe you have some similar experiences. But for example, some of you, you guys are teenagers. Some of you may fear how people look at you because you don't like your own body. And the world will tell you that you can get the right one for a small price. Or that you're not smart enough, so you need the right education. Or you just need to get a job with more money because money will solve your problems. See, the world will sell you all this garbage and it will placate to your fears and it'll play on your fears. And then it'll distract you from our mighty fortress. I like this psalm because I think, it's, it, I think it encapsulates everything we've talked about so far the past few days. What it means to trust and abide in the Lord. What it means to trust in His Word. And in fact, one little word from the Lord totally dispels not only all fear, but destroys our enemies. This is our fortress, our shepherd. I think to understand this, this psalm um, better, you have to understand the circumstances in which it was written. Do you guys know who wrote this psalm? The song, he wrote the song on Mighty Fortress, but the psalm, Psalm 46. It's okay. David did not write it. What? Are you reading, are you reading from your, your Bible? Good job. Good job. Yeah, it's right there at the top. And this psalm is written from an experience of King Hezekiah. You guys, you guys know who King Hezekiah is? So if you go to 2 Kings chapter 19, you can turn there. I'm just going to summarize it. But 2 Kings chapter 19, this is the reality, the backdrop of where this psalm was written from. And so this is the situation. King Hezekiah is with the, his people Israel. And they're surrounded by the Assyrians. The Assyrians were a bunch of nasty, nasty people who are murderers. They were, they were killers. And their king was um, uh, the king Sennacherib. And King Hezekiah was like, there's no way we can win. There's, there's no way, unless the Lord truly intervenes all of my fears, my fear of death, everything is about to happen to me and, and my people. And then he goes to God and he's like, God, if you don't do something, we will die. We will, there's no way, there's no way we can even begin to win this battle. There's, there's none. And so the prophet Isaiah prophesies. He says, don't worry, the, the, our mighty fortress will take care of us. Our king, our Lord, our God has this decree that Sennacherib will fall. And you don't have to lift a finger. You don't have to do anything. God will take care of it. And so something out of like a Hollywood movie. I mean, I wish they made a movie of this. This is so cool. King Hezekiah prays. He's like, God, please, you know, if these words are true. And your prophecy, please help us. It's the only way that we'll, we will survive the night. And so that night, 185,000, 185,000 Assyria Assyrian warriors, killers, trained, trained murderers, died at the hands of one angel of the Lord. In the middle of the night, God sent the angel of the Lord. I, some, some scholars and some theologians say that it, it was the pre-incarnate Jesus that came down. 
But this angel of the Lord slaughtered, I mean, slaughtered 185,000. This is history. This is not like some kind of fantasy story. This is what happened. 185,000 people died that night who were enemies of God by the angel of the Lord, the hand of God. He was, this angel fought through chariots. He put them to fire. He broke their spears and their bows. This is where, this is where we read this. This Hezekiah walks out into this battlefield that he had, wasn't even a part of the, the next day. After it's all done, in the desolation and the bodies of the Assyrian warriors. And he says this. God is our refuge and strength, our very present help in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. The earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. And this is probably the most well-known verse in all this psalm. It's one of those coffee cup psalms. Be still and know. It changes it. The, the backdrop changes this psalm immensely. It, you know, it's kind of like it's nice. Be still and know. I like, you guys know Stephen Curtis Chapman? I like Stephen Curtis Chapman. He's got the song, Be Still and Know. Be still and know that he is God. Right? I love that song. It doesn't really capture the reality of What's going on here? Like wars. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts. Lord Sabaoth, his name, is with us. God of Jacob is our fortress. This is the reality of this psalm. And so we read this psalm telling us to be still and know. Friends, if there's something you want to know about this psalm, it's this. Abide in the fortress. Abide in it. This fortress is our God. Verses 1 to 7 paint this picture of God's people in defense, threatened by enemies that are surrounding her and mean to do her harm. This is a reality for us. I, I keep telling you, this world is not our home. This world's not your home. It's not my home. Your enemies do surround you. The world is an enemy to God. The dangers mentioned in verses 2 to 3 are actually real dangers, things that they experience. So like when, when, <coughs> do you guys know what it's like when 185,000 people are running towards you with chariots? It's like an earthquake. Uh, chariots, like horse-drawn chariots were probably the most terrifying thing. I mean, think about it. It's you on your feet, right? And you're facing down an army of horse-drawn chariots. What do you think's going through that person's mind? Or what do you think would be going through your mind? They're racing towards you with spears and horses. And you don't have a horse you got your feet. What do you think is going through your mind? I don't know about you. I'll be terrified. I got 185,000 people riding horses on chariots, and they're, they're running towards me. I'm going to run like Jack Sparrow the other way. <laughs> like, no, I'm out of there. Like, this craziness. That, but thanks be to God that... We didn't have to fight that battle. Thanks be to God that we don't have to fight the battle that Jesus fought for us. Under such stress and fear, God's people need not fear, actually. 
This is what the psalmist says, because God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Not only will He slow down the waters of life and the chaos that surrounds us and the enemy nations that seem to be camping around us to do us harm, but He provides a fresh water. You guys see that? Verse 4, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. That's what He will do. He provides. Our fortress provides for us. Refreshes us. Gives us peace and joy. When a new day breaks and the enemies begin to assault us, God takes care of them. He fells them with one word like we read in this psalm. And as we sang, one little word shall fail him. One word. That is not hyperbole. That is not something that's just like, oh, that's, that just sounds nice. That's reality. One word from God. Enemies fall. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. His voice utters, and the earth melts. Then verse 7 echoes how the psalm began. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Abide in the fortress. And then it goes another way. Not only does God, with His people... Stand against the threat of real threats, like in this psalm in King Hezekiah, nations, but goes on to fight for them and to win it. He will not just fend off the evil attacks, but he will bring them into his kingdom. Not only will he protect you, but then he defeats enemies and makes those enemies his own. Well, Jared, what do you mean? We were enemies of God. We were enemies. True enemies. And then he sits us at his table as family. Once he's <laughs> subdued us, makes us his own people, and takes care of us. There's a scene break here in verses eight, uh, 7 and 8. Now God's people are no longer bunkered down in defense in the walls of the city, but the message of God's rule and power is, is bursting out from the pages. And this is seen from the city to all the nations. We see in the beginning that God's people standing against the threat of rival nations now is God's message like sounding to the ends of the earth that he is one against all his foes. The word that goes out from God's city is this, be still and know. This is, this is the word that, this is, this is kind of like us sharing the gospel. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among nations. I will be exalted in all the earth. That is the reality. That is, that is true reality for us, that God is actually real. There is a real God out there that came to live perfectly, to die wrongfully, and to raise again gloriously for you and I. So that we become family, so that even His enemies will one day bow before Him, even if they hate Him, can say none other than this. This is the Lord. Everyone, every tongue will utter that. And th this is what we proclaim. Be still and know, He is God. He will be exalted. God declares His divine rule and authority to the nations and demands their submission because of His glory and power and how He saves His people and how He saves you and I. Be still and know that I am God is not a call for 
a respite from life's chaos, a kind of a reprieve or a running away from the distractions and the turmoils and the loss of life. It is an ultimate repentance to lay down arms, to stop rebelling. How does this play out in your life? Practically, we've talked about this. Lay down the sins that so easily entangle you. Lay down your arms that you draw against your parents in rebellion against them and disrespect. Lay down the harsh words and the gossip that you have for one another. Because that's ultimately laying down arms in favor of the righteous and holy God. Be still means cease your striving. Stop kicking against the goad. Stop suppressing the truth and lashing out against God. Surrender and acknowledge His power. The declaration of verse 7 then returns in verse 11. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Abide in the fortress. This is what the psalm is telling us. Abide in the fortress. Your, your sins seem to be battling inside of you. God will finish the battle. Abide in Him. Life is crazy and tumultuous and, and you can't begin to understand what's happening because life is haywire. Abide in the fortress. God will provide a way. You've experienced much loss. God is our fortress. Abide in the fortress. It is better when we are on His side. Surrender and acknowledge Him. In Romans 8, it says, And they are not just conquerors who fight back the foe. They are more than conquerors who take the enemy captive to serve their everlasting good and, advance the, and the advancement of God's kingdom. Friends, that is you and I. So even though life on earth goes haywire crazy, even though the nations attack each other, even though pandemics run amok, even though your fears seem to be never ending, even though the world would want to distract you from your sins and to placate to your sins and your fears and distract you from the heavenly things, God is wise and in control of it all. His hand is far reaching. There's nothing out of his hand. So what troubles you today? What is it in life that you think that oh, if only I could figure that out, it would be better, life would be better? Or what keeps you up laying awake at night because you're so fearful? God tells us in all of your circumstances, He is our solution. He is the refuge in the middle of all of your problems and fears. He is our very present help in times of trouble. He says, I am God. Be still and know. Abide in the fortress. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for the gift of your, your word and your son. We pray that you would help us abide in you, abiding in our fortress. That you will take care of all things. You will provide all things. You will put your enemies under your feet. You will protect us from the evil one. You will help us grow and share, even despite our greatest fears, share the reality of who your son is to a dying world. And tell them to be still and know. We thank you for all these things in your name. Amen. Thank you, guys.